Hey folks, this is Kalani. With the pre-patch landing, this very next reset, you might think that everything is ready to go and the number of changes might start to slow down a bit, but that's definitely not been the case this week. There are so many changes both to pre-patch and to the Shadowlands beta, and quite a few of them have left many players scratching their head. So let's see what's changed this week why some of it is a bit weird, and what it all means for the next few weeks. Before we jump in, be sure to pop by our live stream sometime over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, and we always love chatting with you wonderful folks, so I hope to see you soon. Alrighty, let's kick this off with the Relic of the Past stuff, because if you hopped onto this train, I already feel bad for you. If you need a quick catch-up, professions are changing quite considerably in the pre-patch. Because any expansion will be able to take you from level 10 to level 50, the professions tied to that expansion also need to cover the same level gap, including crafted gear. The solution for this was actually very elegant. Create an optional crafting reagent that increased the item level of any viable crafted gear recipe and make it increase the level requirement at the same time. That brought us to relics of the past. Any profession that can create gear can create a relic of the past, which means everyone has control over what item level a piece of crafted gear can become. Now, increasing the item level of some of this stuff drastically increased the vendor price that you can sell it for. You can probably see where we're going with this. Players figured out that they could craft Relic of the Past 5, that's the one which provides the highest item level on crafted gear, and they can use any profession's crafted relic, so they chose the one which was cheapest and bought up all the materials. Next, they bought up materials to craft very cheap crafted gear that would sell for significantly more thanks to the item level bump when it was vended. So you had a scenario where you could maybe spend 20 gold and create an item that would vendor for about 80 gold. That seems like a very good investment. So much so that plenty of players hopped on the train. I know some players who stockpiled hundreds of thousands of golds worth of materials, expecting to turn it into millions of gold when the pre-patch launched, just by vendoring crafted gear. And then Blizzard nerfed the whole thing. I think nerfed is actually maybe a little bit of an understatement. They took it, they crammed it in a blender, blended it, and then set the blender on fire. There is no way you can ever make gold off this system again, and the changes actually increased the gold cost to craft any of this stuff. The dev team changed the recipes for every relic of the past to include vendor bought reagents. The reagent used will change depending on your profession, but the cost will not. Every one of these vendor bought items will cost you five gold and you need multiple for higher level relics. The Relic of the Past 5, the one which players were trying to make gold with, will need 25 of these, which automatically increases the crafting cost of those items by 125 gold. This one change completely negates any gold you could have made with this shuffle, and it's the reason why you might just see lots and lots and lots of materials flood back onto the auction house at very low prices as players try to recoup some of their losses. Now, personally, I don't think this shuffle was ever a good investment because of two reasons. The first is that this shuffle relies on vendoring items. This isn't selling things on the auction house for a nice profit. You don't have to rely on other players at all. You craft it, you vendor it. If this shuffle had gone live intact, it would have created huge problems for the in-game economy. The dev team will never let you just print gold like this, so the likelihood of changes being implemented was incredibly high. The second reason, it got way too much attention. If this kind of thing ever slips through the cracks, it's because it's kept a secret. The entire gold-making community was shining a very strong flashlight on this huge problem, so it was almost definitely going to get fixed. So if you've been hearing about the relic of the past shuffle that's going to make players millions of gold, the dev team just killed it, which is definitely a good thing in my opinion. So that's one of the bigger changes going into pre-patch, but we have so much more to talk about. 
A bit of a strange change came in for Covenant abilities. For some reason the dev team thought it would be a good idea to make it so you can only use your Covenant abilities in Shadowlands. Kind of how like Azerite traits and essences only work on Azeroth. That would mean that you would be able to use your Covenant class and signature abilities in the new Shadowlands zones, the expansions, new dungeons, raids, and instanced content like Torghast, and then an instanced PvP. And that would be it. The immediate knee-jerk reaction from almost everyone was pretty unanimous. Why? What would this change actually achieve besides removing potential fun from messing around with these new abilities in all content? Thankfully the dev team also agreed with that sentiment because a blue post was very quickly released that said they would in fact be reverting this change to let you use your covenant ability anywhere once again. The blue post also said their initial reasoning was to try and keep the new Shadowlands abilities tied to the Shadowlands expansion and areas for world fantasy reasons. It is maybe a bit weird seeing players use Shadowlands abilities and summoning their stewards in the old world and while that might be true I think this is definitely definitely a case of gameplay over world sense. Losing these cool new abilities just because you're not in the newest areas would be disappointing and I'm glad the dev team has backtracked on this very quickly. But the main concern for me is how flippy floppy the dev team is being right now when we're so close to not only the pre-patch but the expansion launch. Making the decision to implement that change is really bizarre in the first place because I really don't think you get anything worthwhile at all and from the immediate whiplash of feedback saying it's a silly restriction, they decide to revert it. It just feels like a bit of a waste of time when we're so close and every little bit is going to help at this point. Another topic that the dev team has been kind of wishy-washy on is legendary tuning. We have seen so many changes in regards to balancing and tuning recently for all sorts of stuff. Classes, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and this latest build brought a large wave of legendary tuning changes. Some have seen small buffs, a few have seen small nerfs, and then a handful of legendaries have been tossed at the dumpster. If you've been keeping up with some of the stronger legendaries, these will definitely look familiar. For the sub-rogues, Akari Soul Fragment has been targeted with nerfs before. It used to attack with an additional Shadow Strike at 100% effectiveness, that was slashed down to 50% effectiveness as Shadow Damage, and now it's 15% effectiveness and it's no longer Shadow Damage once again. That is such a huge nerf that this Legendary went from best in slot to... Legendary? What Legendary? That's not all though. A Frost Mage legendary called Cold Front was doing incredibly well too. Casting 15 Frostbolts or Flurries calls down a Frozen Orb toward your target. Very useful and very powerful. That was nerfed to 90 Frostbolts or Flurries, which means this legendary would proc 6 times less often. It's not a small nerf of 15 to 20, or even halving the effectiveness by increasing it to 30 casts. From 15 casts to 90 casts. That is a mind-boggling nerf. Obviously that leaves this legendary effect down in the dumps as well. Many other legendaries saw nerfs too, which never looks good when they weren't doing too well before anyway. Now the reason why I say this is all a bit wishy-washy, besides the fact that these legendaries have been nerfed into complete oblivion, is because the dev team made another blue post talking about legendary tuning and balancing. Apparently this build tried to balance legendaries to meet a specific target performance increase, which is why you see a lot of the lower performing legendaries with small buffs, and the most powerful legendaries see massive nerfs. But most of these changes would still leave legendaries in a state where they don't really provide that much of an increase. Apparently that's what the dev team was aiming for and they realized that their bar is too low. And that's pretty much what the blue post says, that their bar was too low and they want legendaries to provide a larger bonus. So they're going to rebalance everything again and make legendaries more powerful in general. I guess that means that none of these legendary changes really mean anything because everything should be changed yet again next week. Hopefully this round of balancing and tuning gets us to a good place because the dev team is running out of time if they want to get everything ship shape before the launch. It's never fun seeing large balance changes in the first or second week of an expansion when everyone is starting to choose which legendaries and effects they want to get first. If you pick up your best legendary in the first week and it gets nerfed in the second week, that's going to feel awful. So fingers crossed they get this figured out quickly. 
It doesn't stop there though, there are some even weirder changes coming in pre-patch. The healers might not be too happy with this next one. Eating food to regen your mana will no longer be linear. Now when you start eating, your mana regen will be significantly slower and it will ramp up as you eat for longer. You can track this very easily on your character page by looking at mana regen. I'm going to use Biltong for this test because it's something most people should be familiar with, with it being a high level Shadowlands food. With the level squish, the amount of mana everyone has was reduced as well. So at level 50, we have 10,000 mana instead of 100,000. So remember that we're working with 10 times less mana overall too. The character sheet will show mana regen per 5 seconds and we start with 400 baseline. And you can see that when we sit down to eat or drink, the mana regen jumps up to 1k, then steadily climbs up to 4000 mana per 5 seconds after you've been sitting for about 9 seconds. So yeah, less mana regen right as you sit down and it increases the longer you keep drinking. So you'll be regening about four times more mana towards the end of eating as you would right at the start. It's pretty significant. Now, one of the reasons they could have made this change is to reduce the effectiveness of drinking for mana in Arena. A healer getting away and out of combat for a brief period of time gives them a chance to drink, and with the current model in BFA, a few seconds of drinking can give you a lot of mana back, but with the Shadowlands change for ramping the mana regen, you would have to sit down for way longer to get the same amount of mana back. So it's definitely a nerf to healers drinking in that sense, but then you have to ask the question whether this is really necessary needed. If a healer gets a way to drink, isn't that just part of the game? Isn't that your fault in Arena? Is that something that really needs a direct nerf? And if it is, shouldn't it only work in Arena so it doesn't affect healers in other content types? The other major point that players have made is drinking in between packs in Mythic Plus Dungeons. You have to make the most of your mana and drink smartly to pull fast and big in Mythic Plus. In Battle for Azeroth, again, a few seconds of drinking would give you a good boost of mana, but with the ramping change, you'll have to sit for much longer in between pulls to get your mana back. So this could also be an effort to force your group to stop more to let your healer drink properly in between dungeon packs. But the hilarious part of this particular knock-on effect is that the main mana source that high-end Mythic Plus healers use is not affected by these changes. You may see the top tier players run around with stacks of sugar crusted fish feasts. These have a rather unique effect in that they replenish a percentage of your health and mana every second instead of a fixed value. That will mean these will always be useful no matter what type of content you're running and they will also always be relevant because they scale directly with your health and mana. I've seen them used for a very quick free heal after a large pack so it's not just for the mana either having everybody sit down to eat for a couple seconds literally can heal your entire party. It's insane without spending your healer's mana. But because these feasts replenish 10% of a healer's mana every second, they are not affected by the change to ramping mana regen. So even if this is an effort to force healers to sit down more in dungeons to drink for mana, it won't actually matter if that healer is using the fish feasts instead, which is kind of just an indirect buff to the fish feasts. Which brings us around to the big question, why? This seems like such an odd change to slap in just before the pre-patch goes live. And again, I don't think you can really find strong justification for the change. Maybe it's for world fantasy, you get a larger benefit from eating for longer. Maybe it's to force healers to drink for longer, or maybe someone just thought it was a cool idea. It just seems like a really strange thing to add into the game at this point in time. Does anyone actually have a problem with how mana regen used to work? Seriously, if you can think of something for this change. However silly, please do let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think about it. And then there is one more change that I wanted to touch on because it might be relevant to some of you wonderful folks. In the pre-patch you'll have to be max level, you have to be level 50 and then I assume when we're going to Shadowlands level 60 to interact with the black market auction house. This might also seem like a bit of a weird time for this change and it kind of is but I do see the benefit of this one at least. The black market auction house can offer up items that are no longer obtainable. This includes transmog, mounts, hard to obtain pets, enchant illusions, 
It's a mixed bag for sure, and it will also become the only place you can get the Brutusaur mount after the pre-patch launches. The reason only max level characters will be able to buy stuff from the black market auction house is probably to stop players from creating characters on low population realms that they don't actively play on just to camp the black market auction house for items they might want. You can very easily send gold across servers these days, whether you ask a gold making community to help you or just transfer an entire a guild, complete with a well-stocked guild bank, you can transfer enough gold to buy anything you want off a black market auction house. The more servers you camp with a lot of gold, the more chances you have to get what you want from the auction house. And lower population realms tend to have less competition for items, which means a higher chance of winning what you want for a lower price. That's why players are doing this, but they typically use lower level characters, because who wants to level up a character to max just to have it set on another server and never get played? No one. So this change should hopefully do two things. The first is to keep a black market auction house's wares for the population of the server that it's on, instead of leaving it open to poachers from around the world of Warcraft, and the second thing is to increase the effort it would take to poach those servers. If you have to level up a character to max to actually use the auction house, well that's just one more hurdle to actually go and do. But if you do level up a character to max, you can still do the same thing as before, you just have to put in a bit more effort. Honestly, I don't know if this is actually going to change too much in the long run. The players who are serious about this kind of thing will most likely just level a character and be done with it, or just buy a boost and level up a little bit. You know, these are the chaps who have plenty of gold. They'll probably just throw it around where possible, but hopefully there will be less poachers. So the players on those servers with lower populations have a higher chance of getting some shiny stuff from the black market auction house instead of, you know, losing it to everybody with lots of gold. Phew, what a week! And that's not even everything, that's just some of the weirder changes that came through, but that is going to be it for this video. What do you think of the legendary balancing that apparently missed the mark this time around? How about the mana regen change so you have to sit down longer to really get a good amount of mana back? And did you buy into the whole relic of the past shuffle? And if you did, what are you planning to do with your materials now? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to explore what's left of the beta, ask us a couple questions, or maybe even help us get ready for Shadowlands, you can find us over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, and watching the stream and coming to say hi is one of the best ways you can support the channel right now, and if you ever wanted to be included in the long list of names at the end of every video, a subscription on Twitch is the easiest way to make that happen. You get a free sub to any Twitch channel if you have Amazon Prime too, so be sure to take advantage of that. A big thank you to everyone who subscribed on Twitch already and to our supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, well, now you know how. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.